I was there, in Dallas, on that day in 1963. I was still working for the CIA at the time. I was sent to Dallas as part of a top secret operation known simply as the Big Event. Our mission was to terminate codenamed Lancer, President John F. Kennedy. It all began in Cuba back in 1960. They had just had their revolution and the communists under the leadership of Fidel Castro had taken control of the government. The CIA couldn't stand the thought of a communist stronghold 90 miles off the coast of Florida. So they devised a plan to overthrow Castro by means of a US-backed army of Cuban exiles in what would come to be known as the Bay of Pigs invasion. The code name for the mission was Operation 40 and it included a joint team of CIA agents like myself, mercenaries, and mafia assassins. You see, prior to the revolution, the Mafia had had a partnership with the Cuban government, and Cuba became a paradise for organized crime and all forms of illegitimate business. When Castro took over, he kicked the Mafia out. Their thirst for revenge, connections in Cuba, and experience in the use of guerrilla tactics and covert criminal warfare made them a valuable asset to the CIA. When I was sent to Cuba in 1960, our orders were to train the guerrilla army as well as carry out various assassination, sabotage, and reconnaissance missions in preparation for the invasion. A year later, in April 1961, the Bay of Pigs made headlines all over the world. The invasion was a disaster. We were outnumbered, outgunned. We never stood a chance. We requested U.S. air support, but Kennedy refused. He hung us out to dry. Three days later, the battle was over. Castro was still in charge, and Kennedy was denying any involvement by the U.S. The Bay of Pigs was the beginning of the end for Kennedy. He had betrayed us, and the invasion's failure had given his administration a black eye it would never recover from. By that time, Kennedy had made many enemies, both in the Mafia and the CIA. But when he began threatening to splinter the agency into a thousand pieces and scatter them to the wind, they decided to kill him. It would be a small team, made up mostly of guys who had been in Cuba. Frank Sturgis, Howard Hunt, myself, as well as a few Mafia assassins. They were the ones who brought in Oswald. He was a patsy from day one, a communist sympathizer who had been exiled to the Soviet Union. The Mafia told him we were a group of pro-Castro communists. He never knew any of our names, or who he was really working for. They finally arrested him in a movie theater. He pled innocence, but it didn't matter. They kept no records of other suspects, took no testimonies from witnesses. They even apprehended us at one point. Sturgis, Hunt, and I had been disguised as bums and were hiding out in a train yard just behind the infamous grassy knoll. They took us in for questioning, but released us shortly after. They took no mug shots, kept no documentation. We had friends in high places in Dallas. Besides, Oswald made the perfect scapegoat, but he could never have shot Kennedy. Not with the piece of junk rifle he was using. Since the assassination, some of the best marksmen in the world had tried and failed to replicate what Oswald was accused of doing, and he barely qualified on the rifle range when he was in the Marines. But all anyone had to do was look at his history as a communist supporter, and his time in the Soviet Union, and they were sure he did it. Kid never stood a chance. When he finally started to suspect that he may have been part of something much bigger, they had him killed by Jack Ruby, a low-level mafia thug. We got away clean. Frank Sturgis and E. Howard Hunt stayed with the agency and were later arrested for their involvement with the Watergate break-in. On his deathbed, Hunt came forward about his involvement in the Kennedy assassination, but he was dismissed by most as a senile old man. I retired shortly after the assassination. I've never told anyone about what we did that day. Partially, I think, out of fear, but mostly out of guilt. No matter how many years pass, I've never forgotten that day. That moment. The pink mist.